In today's video, I wanna share some things you need to look out for and some predictions that will help you navigate the property market and make the correct decisions in 2023. Now this video is a must watch for anyone that's going to be buying or selling a property in 2023, and it's especially important for investors. I also have a very important warning for first home buyers. So if you currently do not own any property, you must watch this video. So guys, let's start off with prediction number one, interest rates to remain steady. Interest rates will not rise by any more than 50 basis points or half a percent. In fact, it's highly likely we will not see another interest rate rise at all, and we will remain at the current rate of 3.1%, with banks offering around 5 to 6% to their customers. Even the RBA has signaled that the rate increases have come to an end. The RBA was very open in December saying that it considered leaving rates alone, and prior to that, they only raised rates by a quarter of a percent. Let's take a look at what some of the experts are saying. Now, expert number one is Dr. Shane Oliver. He's AMP's chief economist and one of the trusted minds when it comes to predicting the Australian economy. It was only last week that Dr. Oliver said in an interview that he expected the Reserve Bank to start cutting the official rate towards the end of 2023, with more cuts to come through 2024. Now let's take a look at expert number two. This is Dr. Gareth Aird. Now Gareth is the chief economist for ComBank and has been one of the most accurate at making interest rate predictions during the pandemic crisis. One reason is that ComBank has so many customers and therefore has so much data on what is actually happening with people's spending. Dr. Ed predicts that rates will only rise by another 25 basis points and then start falling in late 2023 or early 2024. Now, this view is consistent with Dr. Oliver. Expert number three are the major banks. Now, you should put most of your emphasis on what the banks are saying, because the banks are literally risking billions of dollars when they make these predictions, because they're setting the fixed interest rate based upon the predictions that they're making. You see, banks employ dozens of actuaries, just like I do here at Freedom. If you don't know what an actuary is, these are experts in math, and they use math and data to make accurate predictions for the big companies. So here are the predictions by the top four banks. As you can see, rates will not be significantly increasing no matter what bank that you look at. And the current rental crisis means that rents are growing at a really fast pace, which means investors are not really missing out when it comes to cash flow. For example, I recently increased the rent on one of my investment properties in Brisbane from 650 per week to 850 per week, which more than covered any increase in mortgage repayments. And that's happening with my whole portfolio of properties and all of my members and clients are experiencing the same thing. Prediction number two, immigration will hit record levels. Our population is going to explode. Now, just last week, Australia's Centre for Population released a report saying the number of new Aussies arriving from overseas would hit 213,000 in 2023, give or take. To put this into perspective, the population of Canberra is 400,000 people. So every two years, we need a brand new city worth of homes to accommodate all these new people. In 10 years, that's five Canberra's worth of people that will need accommodation. And 90% of this accommodation will come from private investors just like you. This is a massive opportunity for you. Why are we bringing in so many people? Well, Australia is suffering from a chronic skills and labor shortage. It's impacting inflation. We need more people to come here to bring the inflation down and to really get the economy moving. And the only way we can plug this gap is by rolling out the red carpet to people overseas who want to build a new life here. The great thing is, is that the majority of the world want to be here in Australia. So we're going to see hundreds of thousands of migrants entering the country. The more people we have coming in, the more people we have earning and spending money, and this grows the economy and drives property prices up. So expect the government to lose and the rules around immigration and allow even more people into Australia over the coming years. This is gonna be one of the big levers for our economy in the next five to 10 years. For property investors, this is great news as every person who touches down in Australia is a potential tenant for you if you're a property investor. Prediction number three, the rental crisis isn't going anywhere. Now it's no secret that Australia is facing a massive rental crisis. We simply do not have enough homes for everyone who wants to live here now. With millions of new people coming to Australia, the crisis is actually gonna get worse. And because we are not building enough new homes, the crisis is here to stay for at least another 10 years. Now, let me prove it to you. Check out this footage from January in 2023. This is 150 people queuing up to inspect one apartment in Sydney. This is absolute madness, but this is becoming normality. And this is what you're gonna see over the next three to five years but it does represent a huge opportunity for a private property investor like you. Now check out these key stats. The rental vacancy rate on a national level is now hovering at around 1% and even lower than that. This is extremely low and it will take years to change. In fact, it's so low, I would call it dangerous. As a result, rents have increased by well over 15% in the last two years. 
So while rents are going up, the problem is that the construction of new homes, this is both houses and apartments, it's actually falling and it needs to be dramatically increasing. Now, last financial year, Australia built about 175,000 new homes. The problem is that's a 20% reduction on the 215,000 dwellings we built the year before. And guys, we need to be building about 250 to 300,000 homes a year just to meet the need that we have today. Now, part of the problem is supply chain and worker shortages. Materials were so difficult to get our hands on during COVID, and we just didn't have the workforce to actually build the homes. These forces slowed the building industry right down. People were waiting much longer for their homes to be finished, but that's not even the full story. There are now more people than ever before living on their own. Between 2016 and 2021, there was a 17% rise in single person households in Australia. So this means we need more housing. Add in the hundreds of thousands of Aussies who returned home during the pandemic, plus the 200,000 migrants arriving on our shores every year. It's no wonder we're turning on the no vacancy sign here in Australia, and we're seeing crazy videos and queues for rental property. This is bad news if you're renting, but it is an opportunity if you're a private property investor. Now, this is a classic case of supply versus demand. Supply is at an all-time low and demand is at an all-time high. So guys, when you're in that type of environment, this is where opportunity to create an enormous amount of wealth presents itself. Prediction number four, inflation and recession. You're going to be hearing a lot about this in the news and the media. Now, Australia will narrowly avoid a recession and unemployment will stay low. You're going to be hearing a lot about recession in the news in 2023. Major countries globally are likely to suffer a recession. And because the media know that fear sells, they're going to be talking about it a lot. Now, deep recessions and depressions are not good for the economy or society because they can create a spiral that can get out of control. Here's how that spiral works. First of all, people start spending less, companies make less profit, and then companies lay off staff. Now, when you lay off staff, they actually spend even less money again, which means companies make even less profit, which means they lay off even more people. And this spiral can continue and continue. We saw it in Australia in the 90s when unemployment reached 10, 11, 12%, and that wasn't good for anyone. And it can take three to five years to recover from a deep recession. And this means that house price growth on average will be delayed. The good news is that Australia will narrowly avoid a recession. And even if we do suffer a slight recession, it will not be a deep recession and it will not be anything near a depression. So this isn't just my opinion. Once again, Shane Oliver, the chief economist at AMP, he actually highlights seven strong points as to why Australia will avoid a recession. Number one, the business investment outlook is reasonably solid. Number two, there is a large pipeline of homes to be built. Number three, high energy prices globally are boosting national income through our exports. Number four, the Australian dollar will drop if global recession leads to a sharp fall in commodity prices. Number five, immigration is rebounding rapidly. Number six, inflation will be less of a problem here in Australia as compared to the rest of the world. And number seven, the RBA has opted not to hike interest rates too high. They will not crash the economy in an effort to combat the inflation. Now, speaking of inflation, it's currently sitting at around seven to 8%. The expectation is that towards the second half of the year, it'll actually come down to around 4%. Now, from there, the Reserve Bank says its target is to bring inflation back down to 2 to 3%. So rates are going to stay relatively where they are right now until we get back to that 2 to 3%. Now, what does this mean? It means that you can expect the cost of food, fuel, and all our basic goods and services to start going down in the second half of 2023. This means more cash in everyone's pocket. Couple that with interest rates expected to drop towards the end of the year. And as I mentioned earlier, people will feel safer about spending and also investing. Now, here are some more positives for the Australian economy. Exports are on the rise and relations with China are on the mend. China just placed a huge order for our Aussie coal. This is really good news. And this is actually the first deal we've done with the Chinese since they banned coal imports a little while ago now. What's really interesting is that India is set to become the new manufacturing hub over China with global companies such as Apple moving their factories to India. India also has better demographics than China, and the Chinese one-child policy means that China will suffer from a population collapse over the next 10 to 15 years. It will be India that will be on the rise. 
Australia just signed a new deal with India to allow money to flow between the countries and to cooperate militarily. This is one of the biggest ever deals signed by Australia and another country. It's actually called the ECTA. What's really exciting is Australia has a really vibrant Indian community and we're gonna expect more immigration and greater economic ties with India as India continues to industrialize. Remember over the last 20 to 30 years, we've really rode the back of China as they have grown and industrialized. We've now got a great partnership with India as it goes through the same transition. Prediction number five, the property market will not crash. Now let's take a look at what has actually happened in the market. The market has dropped by 8% from May 2022 to January 2023. A rookie investor would think this is a bad time to invest. However, take a look at what happened to the market prior to that. The market experienced one of the biggest booms ever and increased by nearly 24% through 2021. Now let's zoom out to take a look at the market over the last several decades. It's all about perspective as an investor. The problem is when we zoom in at these small chunks of time, we get caught up in the news and the noise and the media, everything going on, the opinion of everyone around us because of the little moves that are happening every single month and we're really behaving like a day trader. Property is not day trading. Property is investing in chunks of 10, 15, 20 years. It's all about perspective. It's all about zooming out and looking at the market long term. The overall market on average does have its ups and downs. These are called property cycles and are totally normal. What's important to know is that on average, property has grown by approximately 7% every year for the past 100 years. As an investor, you are not so worried about the erratic highs and lows and what the media are saying day to day. You are concerned with investing for the long term and averaging at least 7% every year in growth. And if you get that 7% every year for 10 years, your investment will actually double. What's also really important to know is that there are 15,000 suburbs in Australia. So making a decision based on national averages is not the smart thing to do. Smart investors know that you're not investing in the overall 15,000 suburbs, you're actually investing into an individual suburb, one of 15,000 suburbs. And not all 15,000 suburbs are doing the same thing at the same time. So here's a question for you. Did all suburbs experience the 24% boom in 2021? No, some boomed by more, some actually are still waiting to have their boom. There are suburbs right now that you can invest into, they're gonna grow between 100 and 200K over the next 12 to 24 months, despite the fact you're gonna be hearing in the media about a market crash or the market reducing. Now, 2023 will have so many things happening, but I wanna give you this last final prediction. There is going to be a massive amount of wealth created through people who invest into well thought out, well chosen apartments. Now, before I get into this, I wanna let you know that the majority of properties I own are houses and townhouses, and the majority of properties I actually help my clients with are also houses and townhouses. But right now, I am loving adding more apartments to my portfolio, and I'm recommending more people than ever to actually do the same. A lot of people actually doubt apartments as an investment vehicle, but that is completely wrong. I've personally made plenty of wealth through apartments, and the truth is, you can become an outright millionaire by only buying apartments. In fact, my business partner in Freedom Property, Liana Pan, she has made more than 70% of her wealth via apartment investing. People have this misconception that you cannot make money on apartments or apartments are bad or wrong or something like that. Now this is not true and I wanna give you just one example of thousands of examples where an apartment has created more wealth than a house in almost the exact same location over the same amount of time. So let's take a look at this apartment in Broad Beach in Queensland. It was purchased for 810,000 in January of 2017 and it sold for 1.36 million on the 12th of September, 2022. The capital growth on this apartment was 550,000. And in fact, over the 5.7 years of time that passed, this was actually a 9.6% annual growth rate. Now the average for Brisbane during the same time period was 9.3%. So this apartment actually did beat the average. But let me show you a house not far from this apartment that actually performed much worse. So this house was purchased at 409,000 on the 5th of May 2015 and it sold for 642,000 on the 19th of August 2022 and this actually represents capital growth of only 232,000. This actually gives you an annual growth rate of 6.4%. 
Now guys, it is true that you can find examples to prove just about anything, but I just wanna make the point that when you pick the right apartment, it actually can create more wealth than a house in relatively the same area. So here are some more reasons why apartments will be such a great opportunity over the coming years. Now, one of the reasons is because house prices have grown so significantly and they're actually not affordable for many investors and first home buyers. All of that demand is going to flow to apartments because they're actually more affordable. Now also remember that there's over 200,000 migrants coming to Australia every single year. Many of them have a small budget, so they're gonna be focused upon apartments that wanna be close to employment in the capital cities. And many of them come from apartment living in their home countries. So in many cases, they actually prefer living in a well-located apartment. I promise you that you will actually see significant price growth in the right apartments over the next two to five years. And guys, I wanna just finish off with a warning because I know a lot of people that may be looking to get into the market at 500, 600, 700,000, you may be waiting for the market to actually crash. Guys, as I said, the market will not crash. And in fact, when the market does turn and it decides to start growing again, you could actually see growth of between 50 and $80,000 easily happen within a 30 to 60 day time period. Go back and look at the stats. Anytime there's been price growth, it happens quick and it happens fast. And guys, it takes 60 days for you even just to organize your finance. You've got to be very vigilant, you've got to be aware, and you should actually start looking at getting into the market now. Out of the 15,000 suburbs in Australia, there will absolutely be a suburb that will be well positioned for you to be able to make a move on now rather than waiting. So guys, thanks for watching this video. I'm really interested to know what you think about my predictions. And also I'd like to know what other predictions you may have. Leave a comment, let me know what you think about my predictions and I'll see you guys at the next video.